Well, we got a bunch of icicles this morning, which is both uh, good and bad. Uh, it means uh, we are uh, keeping this warm because we're still below freezing out here. But it also means we have some heat loss, which is to be expected. I haven't insulated or anything on this, so. Uh, I mean, I, <clears throat> I've insulated it, I mean, but I haven't uh, done any spray foam in the gaps and that sort of stuff, so. So today I'm gonna be uh, setting up uh, the plumbing uh, connections, gonna put the pump in, uh, get everything set up. Um, supplying water uh, to the pressure tank. That's the project for today. Well, I'm going to go ahead and soldier on here and uh, go ahead and get uh, the pump set up, connected into the pressure tank, <clears throat> and uh, get that all set up other than the, uh, the inlet coming in. Um, I'll have that run with some pecs to it, ready to go. I just need to get the proper fitting on for the uh, storage tank we have. Alright, so here's the basic setup for this thing. Um, so we've got our water source, which is our IBC tote. We're gonna uh, feed that uh, line into this, which is our pump. Uh, we're gonna do a little pecs over from there, uh, from our pump uh, to our uh, pressure tank here. This is uh, a one-way valve, so basically the water goes this way and it can't go back that way, so when the pressure uh, in the tank comes up it just doesn't push it all back out um, gauge on there safety uh, valve uh, flush valve we're gonna wire the pump into the switch here uh, which is a 3050 switch and so when the call for water uh, comes on it'll uh, turn on the pump and then when it fills it up it'll turn it back off and then from here on up we will do our uh, hot water tank there, we do a propane uh, tankless water heater. And we also do some filtration uh, from there up as well um, before it gets to the pressure tank, or be excuse me, before it gets to the uh, hot water heater. Uh, we wanna filter out any uh, any of the junk that might be in there, so. That's our basic setup. What were you saying? <laughs> I was saying I like big icicles. Look at the icicle on that trailer. Check out those icicles. Little baby ones. But this one. It would be a shame to break it off, but I want to break it off so bad. Look at that one. This one is Mac Daddy. This is the perfect weapon. And nobody will ever know. Look at that. You're jealous, aren't you? You want to play with these icicles too. Well, another epic fail. I bought the cinch style clamp tool and crimp rings, which don't work with each other. Boo. Okay, I went and got the proper crimp tool kit for the type of uh, crimps I got. And I got the female female fitting. I'm gonna pipe that in kind of over that way, pump on that side, and then loop back and over here. I'm laying down on the job again. I really like your bed spray. <laughs> it's nice, huh? Yes. It reminds me of one my grandmother used to have. Isn't this your grandma's? Yes. <laughs> well, she used to have it. <laughs> she used to have it, okay. Like, it seems, seems like I remember a story about your, this used to be your grandma's. Yeah. So I'm changing out the uh, jaws uh, on the PEX crimp tool. Um, so we got three quarter inch right now. 
I couldn't find any one inch fittings that I wanted, so it's gonna have to be three quarter for right now. Um, we'll see if that does. I got this uh, style crimp ring. Basically, it just slides over the end of the pecs onto the shoulder like that. And it give, automatically gives you the spacing you want because you want these back a little bit. And then we just use these jaws to crimp it down. And then we'll check and uh, make sure with our little gauge that uh, we're in good shape. All right, so I've just got a short little chunk of pecs I'm gonna use to connect these two. Um, the pecs will just slide on right there. We've got our spacer collar on there, which is perfect. We're gonna use our crimpers, which hopefully will work in this tight space. Oh no. Okay, I've got this finagled in here. Let's see if I can get it to go. Oh, maybe. Oh, goodness. Don't think I had it. Crunk quite where. Okay, maybe that'll work. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. That's what I was looking for was that lock. Oh goodness, get out there. Okay, so let's use our little gauge. And we will see if we are good or not on that. So our three quarter, go, no go. Perfect, okay, so on the gauge, uh, let's see if we can see that or not. So it, if it slides all the way on, um, it's not good, and if it doesn't slide on far enough, it is. It should land right there, which is really hard to show on this shot. Okay, I went ahead and shortened that up a teeny bit. Come on. Woo. All right, so this tool, by the way, not so good in tight spaces, just an FYI, depending on what you're doing. Okay, put our little gauge on there, go, no go, and we're good. Perfect. So a quick explanation on the go, no go gauge here for the uh, for the pecs fitting. So uncrimped, they don't go in at all. Crimped, they should, you know, center about right there, and there'll still be a gap at the top there. If they go in all the way, once again, no go. So slide it in there, and if it catches on those little little bump outs, I don't know if you can see that or not, uh, we're good. So that's kind of the concept behind the go, no go. Just a quick check, make sure you got a good seal, good fitting. So simple little loop right here, headed over to our intake. Um, I sh could have done that a little cleaner with fittings, but like I say, it's just temporary. Um, so I just did it like that for now. The uh, PEX is a lot uh, cheaper than the fittings.